Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and just covered exactly what this application is, what it's going to do. If you missed it, please go ahead and watch the first episode. It has a lot of good content in there to get you caught up to speed. Let's go ahead and dive into a little bit of the data here of the app and exactly what we want to do here. So I'm thinking the way I want this app to work, I want it to kind of feel fluid and nice and calming and all that kind of stuff. So we're going for that aesthetic here. That's why we got some rounded edges and, and corners here, which is uh, super helpful for that whole vibe and whatnot. I also think page two is going to be the primary page that I, uh, that I want us to land on, right? I want it to land in the middle page and you can navigate left, you can navigate right. And if we ever get past three navigational, you know, areas, we can always change the way this composable looks, we can always make this horizontally scrollable, whatever the case is. Uh, but I was thinking page two is going to be the like, quote of the day kind of thing, because this API provides that kind of information, you know, grabbing a JSON snippet here from the network response, because I don't want to get into the networking aspect just yet. I think there's enough that we can do here, we can kind of fake an API call in the meantime, to basically get the data uh, on screen, get the UI coming together. And then probably in the next episode, or maybe the one after that, we could look to connect the network. So taking a look at this uh, JSON here, we have an object that has a value, uh, sorry, a key Q, a key A, and a key H. I guess they're really trying to uh, keep an eye on how much data they're sending over the wire. H here, I'm not a real big fan of. It looks like it is you know, fully formatted for HTML. So we are just going to cut that out and we are not gonna care for it. The only two things we're gonna care for in uh, each quote object we get back is Q and A. Uh, the Q stands for the quote here. So this is the actual quote of the day on today when I looked at the API. And then Martin Luther here, um, you know, was the prominent figure, the author of this quote. Uh, and so we have a little bit about the author about the quote itself. And so we can just build a little primitive UI with that kind of information. So I think the a good place to start here, updating our app state here. So we have some navigation information, let's go with the quote of the day. And this is going to be an object of type quote. And so we have our uh, data class here defined pretty straightforward. Um, this is going to get interesting the more I think about it. Because as I mentioned, this comes from an API, right, but we need to have an app state specifically, we need to have an initial app state, which of course is going to require the quote of the day. Um, now, we're not going to have a quote of the day when when we just open the app, right? Because we're going to have to actually do a networking operation in order to, uh, you know, kind of get that information for us. So this is going to have to change here. It's not just going to be able to be a quote, there's going to have to be some kind of loading state, error state, uh, success state, all that stuff that we're gonna have to build in. So that comes with the networking aspect of things. It's kind of why I wanted to avoid it for now, it kind of gets a little complicated pretty quickly if you want to do it right. Uh, and don't get me wrong, we will do it right. But I want to keep the scope uh, manageable here. We are all good there. We're kind of just initializing our app state uh, here, which is all good and well. I also want to get something other than page one, page two and page three here. So let's just say let's change this to be the daily quote. Let's just go ahead and rerun this here. Everything should be fine. But I do just want to see how our navigation looks at the very top lovely. So we have all quotes, we have daily quote, we have favorites, we notice we now are kind of missing all of the content inside the body of this page here, which is, uh, you know, pretty interesting. We'll get to that in a second. But if you notice, we were on all quotes when we first came in. And that's because our selected page is hard coded to the first page. Like I said, we want to have the middle index be the one that is selected. So we're just going to go ahead and change that to pages one. And now we'll kind of open the app here on daily quote. We'll go over here to our one quote app. And this is exactly why our content kind of just started failing, right? Because we were looking explicitly for, uh, you know, a particular title, um, you know, like the, the actual text here, and obviously, we changed page one to be all quotes, page two to be daily quote. And so none of this was actually triggering, which is not what we want. And so for the time being here, we're just going to go ahead and update these strings to kind of look for what we're looking for. And everything should kind of work as we had it before. Not a big fan of it, we're going to eventually get rid of this anyway, but we are all good and well. And I don't know if you noticed, but when we did open the app, we were on this daily quote, this middle bit here. So instead of the temp content here, we're going to go ahead and actually create out this first page that we're going to be displaying to the user here. So we're going to create a new composable here. Let's call this the daily quote screen. 
And for the time being here, this is going to have to take in a quote, right? Because we're gonna to wanna to display that information. All right, folks, we made a little bit of progress here. I wanna loop you guys back in. Uh, very simply here in our daily quote branch, we're just calling our daily quote screen composable, passing in the quote of the day. And before you know it, we have a little bit of a UI on screen already. If we go ahead and just flip around here, we'll see that we're kind of accomplishing this navigation now. It's a little bit more clear to see. Uh, obviously, we've got some work to do in the UI, but you know that concept is coming together here. Taking a look at our composable, very straightforward here. We have a column, uh, fill max size, vertical arrangement in the center, so we can get that box in the center here. So we have that box here, just a little bit of modification. Uh, we apply some padding, we have an aspect ratio, put a little bit of a background on it as well. Uh, could you use a card? Yeah, sure, maybe, but you know, I like the flexibility that Compose gives you. You know, you can kind of just uh, make whatever you want from simple, simple little Legos they give you. So I find it's a little bit more enjoyable that way at times. And then simply we just have our text in here. We have our display text, our author, all coming from the quote. We're aligning it in the center or the bottom end. And as we can see here in the UI, it's not perfect, but it doesn't look that bad here. So our font size, let's go with like, I don't know, 32 SP. Let's see how that works. And then also our color here. Um, let's go, let's see if color.white, let's see how that looks on our little box there. And then for similarly here, I kind of want to move it. It looks like the UI is kind of broken because we've been modifying something, but I want to move it away from the uh, edge there. So we're going to give it a little bit of a padding. That's what we're looking for there, the font weight. And let's go ahead and make it uh, bold for the time being, see how that looks. Go ahead and uh, rerun things here. Text alignment here in the first one. So let's go ahead and text align. Uh, Okay, cool. So like it's, you know, it's starting to come together here. Nothing good ever comes from violence. Martin Luther. Uh, I think I want to add one more layer to this somehow. I wanted to loop you guys back in here because I think this is kind of the route I want to go, but this really highlights the ordering of modifiers here, right? We see that we apply a padding first and then we apply a background afterwards of the black color and we can see in the UI that the exact same thing is replicated, right? So we basically want to make sure that we're applying uh, sorry, we should probably just apply the padding at the end, right? Because we want to apply everything else and then we want to apply our padding. Uh, we'll see the difference immediately here when we go ahead and rerun things. And you can now see that the, uh, you know, the color takes up the full background and then the content within the text has the padding on it. Or, well, that's one way of doing it, right? We can apply the same background if we want to accomplish the same uh, you know, rounding of the corners, but there is also another way that is probably a bit more scalable so you don't have to worry about clipping everything that exists inside of a composable that has, you know, edges that are kind of clipped here. And so on our parent here inside of the box, we can then simply just call dot clip and then we can pass in a particular shape. That shape that we're going to have, we're going to want to take from here. And so now anything what happened to the UI, uh, anything that is inside of this uh, element is now going to get clipped to it. So we can kind of have the children just lay themselves out as they want. Obviously, it will get clipped as we see fit there, as we tell it to. Or, sorry, the parent will clip the children no matter how they lay themselves out. So we can just go ahead and uh, leave that there, and that covers all of our cases. I do still want the text on the right, though. All right, not super in love with the way the UI looks. Give me a second, see if I can play around with it. All right, and so I came up with something like this here. Let's walk through it real quick. We have a, uh, again, we have a column here. We have our box. Nothing really changed here at this point. Uh, maybe some background colors and such, but everything else remains the same. Our first text here uh, is going to be in the top center. We're going to have a little bit of padding on it. You know, certain font size, color, text alignment, italic. That's just our, you know, the actual quote itself. The more interesting part kind of gets towards the bottom here. So we have another text that displays our author information aligned to the bottom. Uh, we have it take up the full width and we set the background to black. Uh, and then we apply our padding on that, right? So that we get this nice little like 
background row looking thing uh, with our author's name, uh, you know, adjusted to the bottom right there. That is the text align and doing that for us. And then at the bottom here, we do have a box here. As we mentioned, there is like a favorites tab over here that could probably house all of the different favorite, um, you know, quotes and things of that nature. So we have, uh, you know, somewhat of an interesting design. So we have another box here. We have some padding. Uh, we have a size set for the uh, item itself. We have the alignment in the bottom start. Uh, and then we just basically round the corners, make it, you know, a perfect circle with the 50% uh, rounded corner shape. And we kind of have a little bit of a clickable uh, attribute to it so we can kind of listen for that click we can handle it um, you know however we want and, uh, and that's about it the icon here we're just setting it to the favorite border uh, and and that's basically it right eventually this would have to have a little bit more logic to either become the filled in heart or just the regular heart you know, the, the, the border that we have here based upon the favorite status, but we'll cover that in the future. I'm not too worried about it. Um, maybe we can update some things so that our clickable doesn't have a to-do. Um, our quote here, we can say, well, maybe, maybe it makes sense for our quote item here itself to say uh, inside of here, Val is favorite. We can leave that as a boolean here. We're going to go ahead and update this. Let's say is favorite equals false as our initial state. All is good there. And then here we have that information um, that we need. So we can simply say if uh, quote dot is favorite, we're going to put in the favorite itself. Otherwise, let's just import it. Otherwise, we're going to have the favorite border. Um, so now this icon will update dynamically based upon the status of our data. That is what we love to see. And then our clickable here, we can very easily just change the to do. So let's just say on favorite clicked here. This will be a lambda here that doesn't return anything. I'm trying to think, do we need to? Yeah, sure. Let's pass in the quote object itself. Why not? The app state quote. And then here, we can simply just say on favorite clicked and we'll pass in our quote. So now that will handle everything we need to see there. And then the last little bit here is just updating our call site here to say on favorite clicked. And at this point, uh, you know, we can maybe just put our to do here instead, uh, you know, to do handle on click. And so I know we're not really handling the on click yet, but if we initialize the quote of the day to be is favorite true, uh, then we are going to have this filled in item here. So we'll kind of be able to see that go back and forth as the user clicks. Obviously, it would then show up in our favorites here. Uh, but for now, we kind of have this daily quote, this large ticket item here kind of grabbing your attention immediately. And possibly, you know, that's about it, right? We'll refine the UI as we see fit. That should do it for now. So thank you for following along. If you've made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on new content. Like the video if you enjoyed it to help me out and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.